Hi everybody, this is Brian with the Instructional Technologies Coordinator team here in the School District of Waukesha. And this is a uh, follow-up video focused on parental restrictions and allowing our parents and guardians to set some more in-depth restrictions on the iPad um, that they would feel more comfortable with. In the last video, Mr. Van Curen focused on parental restrictions and specifically what apps could be blocked and how to turn apps on and off. Um, and just kind of a general overview of that. We're going to dig in a little bit more deeply into one specific element of that, which is the filtering and the web filtering. So on our iPad, you'll notice, first of all, that I am in iOS 7. And um, when I go into settings and about, I can learn some things about, about it from there. Um, but what, I, what I'm really looking at is the software update portion. And you'll see here I'm on iOS 7.0.2, so this is the most updated version of this. Previous versions of the um, of iOS don't have as granular of restrictions, so you'll want to get to this point to be able to replicate what I'm showing you here. So um, we're going to jump in again, and you'll notice I am in the settings once again. So that's right here. And as Dale showed you, um, we're looking at restrictions. Now you can see I've got restrictions already set to on here. But um, it is going to ask for a restrictions passcode. Whenever you set a parental restriction, of course, we encourage you not to share that with your son or daughter, um, as they can then just go in and undo any changes that you've made. But I also want to encourage you that whenever you set a parental restriction, you do have that written down somewhere um, so that you won't forget it yourself, as that can be quite an issue. So um, we're going to go ahead and hop in here. Pretty easy password. And um, if you don't have restrictions turned on already, I'm going to go through this quickly. It'll say Enable Restrictions up at the top. And when you click Enable Restrictions, you'll be asked to set a password. Then I can go in and start making some changes. So the one that we're specifically looking at here is in the Websites function. So I'm going to go ahead and click Websites, which is right there. Now you'll see that it comes in by default as all websites. What that means is that no matter where the device is, no matter what, um, what web filtering is in place, the device is not going to restrict you from getting to a particular website. Now here, while you're in the school district of Waukesha, um, we have internet filtering that is on. Um, by law, we have to do a certain levels of internet filtering, and we do that. Um, so if they were here at school, you would get the, uh, you would get the filtering that is available here at school and that we have set in place, even though it's selected all websites. At home, if you have OpenDNS or some other sort of filtering product available at home, um, although it says all websites here, it is still going to default to whatever is, is available on the network because the traffic will never really get to the iPad um, at the network level filtering. So just want to clarify that for you. Now we're going to drop to the very bottom list here, which is specific websites only. This is the most restrictive um, that you can be. And in specific websites only, the only things that will appear on the iPad are the things that are specifically added in this list here. Right. I'm going to go back and try to browse. Okay, you'll see I came in at Facebook there, and Facebook is automatically restricted. I'm going to try to go to Amazon.com. Okay. That's also a restricted site. When we go back to the setting, restrictions, pop in, okay. And now we'll go down to websites. And if I want that particular website available, add website, just as I demonstrated before, www. Jump out to the app, and you'll see when we go to Amazon.com, it's available now. So now this makes that available. But any other website that I try to go to, such as a gaming website, this is what I get. One limitation I'll, I'll offer here of this is as students are being asked, depending on their grade level uh, and their the appropriateness for their age level, as they're being asked to go out and do research, um, it's difficult for a parent to predict in advance all of the websites that they would need. And so one of the limitations that we do see in this particular feature um, is the inability to for students to really 
explore lots of different websites. Um, it's almost as if the parent has to know in advance exactly where kids are going to go uh, as they're working through whatever research they're working on. So we're going to jump back into that re website restriction there. So that's the specifics websites, specific websites only, and that is the most restrictive. Right in the middle is a limit adult content. Now, as I talked about before, adult content is uh, by law filtered here in the, in the school district. Um, but when I, when I choose limit adult content, that's going to come with a pre-existing list um, of adult websites that are automatically filtered out. Some, uh, we don't set that at the school district, that's something set by Apple, um, and so if you have questions about that, you'll probably have to direct that at um, an Apple employee. But um, what we do like about this particular level, along with whatever is in that uh, limit adult content pre-made list, is the ability to add always allow and never allow. So you see those right here. We just talked about always allow. So if for some reason that adult content that's being filtered is something like the Amazon website, and that would be an important piece of it, you can always go in and add that particular website to the list here. We'll just do that for the sake of done. Okay, so now that will always be allowed unless for some reason that is being filtered at the network level. What we really like though is the never allow feature. So I'm gonna come in here and I am going to add to that facebook.com. So now in the never allow, I have the ability to say that uh, my son or daughter is not going to be, get, to be able to get to facebook.com from the Safari browser. And depending on how you've managed the apps and what apps can be installed on there, um, you can entirely eliminate the opportunity for them to do that through an app as well. Um, so that's just some of the functionality that's available there. When we open up, okay, so Amazon's on our always allow list. That's good. Let's make sure Facebook is not allowed. And there we see that's restricted. When it says allow website, it's going to ask for the restriction code. And this is why we suggest you don't share that with your son or daughter because they're going to try multiple times. They're going to get to a limit. I believe that limit is six. And then it's going to lock them out of trying to get onto that website again. So there you can see the blocks in action. The last part I want to engage you in is just a conversation about... Um, thinking beyond just the idea of blocking. Um, kind of at a knee-jerk reaction, blocking makes some sense because if we can keep you from going to a specific place, then um, hopefully you'll stay more focused on your academics and, and what you should be doing with the devices and what you should be doing in the classroom. Uh, but one thing that we consistently deal with in the world of um, technology is the fact that there's a million ways to do any one given thing. And um, we often play a, kind of a... a chase game with students where if something gets blocked, um, they find they spend a lot of energy finding ways to get around that. So one thing that you may want to invest in is uh, more of a, a knowledge of what your son or daughter is actually doing on the, on the device. Um, so here I am, I'm in my settings again, and I'm going to go down to Safari. And one of the things that I can do inside of the Safari app is I can take a look at um, the history of what's, what's happened there. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see advanced. And there's a button called website data. Here you can see a list of the website data that, that uh, has been accessed. I'm going to click on show all sites. And so you can see some of the things that this particular user has done with it. Um, they've gone to a guitar website. They've gone looking for recipes. Um, they've gone to Facebook at some point. They've attempted to go to Home Depot for something, WikiLeaks for something. So you can take a good look at, at the uh, history that's here. And we can also do some editing of that history. So let's say that I decide to sit down and take a look at what my son or daughter has done throughout the day using Safari. Um, I can take a look at that history and then I can begin to clear it out so that the next day I can have a fresh look at, at what was done at school today. And so this begins to, instead of always worrying about blocking, this begins to inform the conversation of what you're actually doing with this. Another key piece is that uh, understanding that if you're going to have this, this conversation with your son or daughter, they are just as capable of coming in and taking a look at this um, and deleting it out as you are. So 
um, being able to kind of take a look at what's been done throughout the day and have that ongoing conversation with them um, is going to be a pretty important piece uh, of this. So you may want to start by taking a look at it, and then when you begin to see a trend happening um, of certain data that's there, then engaging in that conversation about the best use of that technology. So those are just some, some pieces to think about as you consider web filtering and um, things that you can do at the parent level.